the primary antibody versus the secondary antibody. Um, there are several reasons why secondary antibody is important or useful. One of them was uh, if you label directly the primary antibody with a drug or maybe fluorescent the reporter molecule. Now, if you, th you can think, you know, that coupling of drug molecule or uh, the fluorescence molecule, reporter molecule, can be chemical reaction. Right? That chemical reaction is mainly antibodies nucleophile. That means lysine or cysteine is going to be coupled with uh, the drug molecule or fluorescence molecules. So if you think how we can perform that kind of reaction, it's almost like a random reaction. You mix antibody with a drug molecule. And that drug molecule can be labeled randomly in different position of lysine or cysteine. If that binding happens on paratope, paratope is the FAB area, which is binding to epitope. If you cover that area, then the binding affinity will drop. Right? So that motif, a binding motif, the pattern of an epitope will not be changing. But if you do the random chemical reactions, there are many lysine motifs and also system motif it can be modified. And that can be one possible potential reason the primary antibody can be negatively affected. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So this week, uh, the, the concept, maybe some of those concepts may not be very easy for you to understand. So if you have other questions, I will take the questions before we start with today's class. Any other question for this antibody and immune system? Okay, if not, I will invite you to question again at the end of the class. And let's just start this class. And again, we are going to start with the Kahoot user phrase. Hey, let's go. Well, the, the answer could be either 150 or 750. If you count one, the antibody's molecular weight is 150. If you count that as a pentamerous molecular weight, that can be 750. Okay. So that's a depending on how you count. Maybe the question was not very clear. So I assume uh, you take this one, but majority of you, the, the 150, logically, yeah, one molecule of IgM is 150. You, but they form usually pentamer, star shape. Okay. So the complex is a 750. Okay. Okay, not bad. It's a kind of a three portion. Each one portion is a 50 kilo dipom. And heavy chain is a 50. Light chain? 25. 
Okay, single chain FV is a half of that one unit. So 50 kilodalton, this one is the FAB, but this is a half of that, okay? If you are not clear, then look up that antibody structure again. Okay, germline antibody is flexible. After it is matured, then that becomes more and more rigid, and then it becomes a key and lock. Okay. That's why germline should be induced a bit, and later they become key and lock model. Okay, somatic versus a germline. Germline means it's inherited just as we were born. Okay, somatic is uh, after we were born, then each part of our body is a uh, matured state, that's a somatic. And hypo and hyper. Hypo is a low, hyper is a over. Okay. Over mutation, that's a somatic hyper mutation. Okay, epitope is the own antigen. And what is the own antibody? Paratope. Paratope, Paratope right? Paratope binds the epitope. Okay. Active vaccination is induce immune response in our body. So make antibody in our body. That's active vaccination. Passive vaccination is utilizing antibody made by somebody else. Then let them do the cleaning job. Okay. Cow serum contains, cow serum itself can maybe can act as an antigen in our body too. But the main purpose of a cow serum is utilizing that antibody existing inside the serum. Wudu is for Chanyandu. It's a different species, a slightly different species, but that's also similar kind of uh, the virus. And then it can induce uh, the immune system, immune response too. The attenuated virus and dead bacteria, all of them is active vaccine. Today, we don't get 100% the right answers. The starting point was the DNA, and then that was done by Dr. Sudden. 
and extend it to a little more unstable molecule, RNA, it's a northern. So if you're confused, I memorized this one as South Korea is more stable than North Korea. RNA is, a, DNA is more stable than RNA. That's how I memorized this, okay? Western blotting is for antibody. Eastern blotting, it's not fully established yet. You can pick up this as yours. If you have a five kinases as a target, then how many primary antibodies do you need? Five. You need five primary antibody because your target is five. Okay. So one, those five kinases you can inject one by one into mice or rat, then you can make primary antibodies. In the beginning, they are polyclonal antibodies and you can make a monoclonal antibody one by one. So anyway, you get five primary antibodies because your target is the five, okay? Primary antibody is binding directly to your target. Secondary antibody does not care about the kinase. Secondary antibody is only cares where the primary antibody was made. If it was made in mice, or if it is made in red. Depending on that, secondary antibody recognize the FAC part of a primary antibody. Then those epitopes, the paratop will be all different, but FAC motif is the same. That's why in this case, if you prepare just the two secondary antibody, one is anti-mice FC, the other is anti-red FC. Okay. So the convention of uh, the how to give the antibody name, if the antibody is against the kinase, then you call anti-kinase. Okay. If that was made in mice, then you can call mice anti-kinase. If it was made in red, then it's a red anti-kinase. Okay. If the antibody is against the FC, fragment constant, then you call anti-FC. Now you need to define which FC, then anti-mouse FC, anti-red FC, okay? That's how you write um, the antibody's name. So in this case, primary antibody-wise, you need five each, five for mice, five for red. Secondary antibody, you just need only two, one for mice, one for red. So you cannot use all five at the same time, but you can use the same secondary antibody one by one for all those five kinase, uh, five antikinases because they have the same FC structure. So this is another advantage of using secondary antibody. If it is if you need to label primary antibody in the beginning of the class, I said you have a very better chance to block the parabol. So that's a bad part. But if you don't touch the primary antibody, then you don't have a chance to block the, the particle. Secondary antibody will bind only to the FC part. So then secondary antibody, if you can label the secondary antibody not on that particle, then the secondary antibody can be used for any kind of a primary antibody. So your job is just to make primary antibody, no need to further process. And you just buy secondary antibody, it's already commercially available. So you just mix them together. Of course, you should add one by one. Primary antibody first and wash out. And add a secondary antibody and wash out. Then you can see those original primary antibody positions. Okay? Move on.
Okay, good guess. At least you catch this MAB monoclonal antibody here. So at least you didn't choose them. Nice. Here, IV, this is IV is inhibitor. Inhibitor. This part is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Okay. So by the name, if you can recognize this part, then you can say this is uh, the small molecule drug. Now, Herceptin is uh, famous. It may have a different name like this, but Herceptin is a very famous uh, the antibody drug. So that's why I put up this is too. And today we are going to hear three talks about this three antibody drugs. So this week's uh, the topic is antibody and immune therapy. Next week is the immunotherapy or immune checkpoint drug. Even though these compounds here, these three drugs are antibodies, but it's a different from immune checkpoint drugs. Okay, so before we move into immune checkpoint, still these antibodies, they are targeting specific molecular target. So that's why this, this is a belong, these are belonging to the second generation of targeted cancer therapy. Okay, first one was a conventional cancer therapy targeting fast growing cells. Second generation is specific molecular target and targeted cancer therapy. And next week is the third generation, actively utilizing our immune system, so-called immune checkpoint. Okay, so you need to distinguish them. Before we move that to that part, we are going to hear about second generation of the antibody drugs. Okay, today's topic, today's uh, the presentations. So three of them. The first one will be Sejin will present about the Herceptin. Similar target, but slightly different target. So presented by Dongo. And then again, different other target. This is angiogenesis and the target. We're utilizing all antibodies. So let's see here in this order. So one by one. Okay, Sejin. All right, let me start it. Hello, this is Sejin, and here is another name of her sect in Trastrimate. So today I'd like to introduce a very famous antibody cancer drug, Herceptin. I'm going to call this drug Herceptin for, for pronunciation. So Herceptin is a monoclonal antibody used to treat breast cancer and stomach cancer. It is specifically used for cancers that express HER2 receptor on their surface. It may be used by itself or together with other chemo chemotherapy medication for better effectiveness. It is developed by famous global big pharma Roshu and it is ranked in the top 10 of drug sales. So here is a table showing drug sale for last two years. At least I recommend you to memorize some of those drugs because they dominate pharmaceutical market now. The top is placed by Shumira, known as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, in Korean rheumatis guanjelium. Perceptin is marked with red color even though drug sales in 2019 is decreased than 2018, it still record more than $6 billion. It is about 7,000 in Korean, which is much higher than one year budget of Puan City. So how did one drug make such a value? Now I'll let you know the mechanism of action of Herceptin. when EGF, some the ligand bind to the 
HER receptor. HER receptor is kind of EGF receptor. So when the ligand binds to the receptor, as you can see here, MAP kinase pathway or PI3 kinase AKT pathway is initiated by means of dimerization of receptor. Then it activates kind of transcription factor pathway related with cell proliferation and mobility because one of many other downstream effect is the production of VGF supporting endogenesis. The HERT gene is overexpressed in 20 to 30% of early stage breast cancers. The HERT pathway promotes cell growth and division when it is functioning normally. However, when it is overexpressed, cell growth accelerates beyond its normal limits. Receptin consists of two antigen specific sites that bind to extracellular domain of HERT receptor. And the remainder of the antibody is human IgG with a conserved FC portion. So there are several possible mechanisms by receptin. Firstly, cleavage of the extracellular domain of HERT2 leaves a membrane bound postpolate P195 which can activate signal transduction pathways. This picture is a little bit long. And binding of Herceptin to an extracellular domain of HER2 reduces shedding of the extracellular domain, thereby reducing P195. Then Herceptin may reduce HER2 intracellular signaling pathway by basically inhibiting either homodimerization or heterodimerization. Homodimerization means dimerization between HER2 and HER2. Heterodimerization means HER2 with HER1, 3, or 4. Receptin may recruit immune factor cells, as you can see in the E picture. Effector cells such as NK cells or macrophage through their FCA lesion. It is referred to as antibody dependent cytomatic cytotoxicity, as known as ADCC. Cancer cells might be lysed by this, those kind of immune response of effector cells. Additionally, receptor down regulation through endocytosis might be induced. Those are several possible mechanisms by receptin. And this is antiviral drug conjugate is on spotlight for next generation drug. You already learned the concept of ADC in the last video lecture. Casala is ADC forms of Herceptin, which is developed by Russia as well. It consists of the Herceptin antibody covalently linked to the cytotoxic agent DM1. Perceptin alone stops growth of cancer cells by binding to a HER2 receptor. However, Casala has same effect over Herceptin, of course, and at the same time, DM1 is released by lysosomal degradation and subsequently bind tubulin to cause mitosis arrest and sell this. Its clinical efficacy is still controversial. In some clinical tests, it showed better survival rate than Herceptin. However, given the cost issue, it was not very impactful. It still requires more and more research. <coughs> uh, in terms of cost issue, in fact, those kind of biopharmaceuticals, uh, those kind of Herceptin or Casala has always have price issue. This is so expensive for general people due to the complex molecular structure and manufacturing process. The cost of getting a single shot is at least 1 million won. To solve this problem, many developing companies are trying to copy the original drug 
which has same safety and same efficacy, but low manufacturing cost. It is called a biosimilar. In Korea, two companies are leading this service. One is Samsung BioEpis, the other is Celtrin. They are striving to get drugs approved by FDA. And a few efforts are paying off. I mean, some of their efforts get some success. SV3 in Samsung BioEpis and Herjuma in Celtrin got approved by FDA and are ready to be launched in US market in 2020. This might be a small talk, but I want you to get some information about what is really going on in the industry of health. The biomarket is really huge, huge area and has a lot of potential, especially in Korea. I hope it to have more interest in bio industry and lead this field in the future. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Sejin. Uh, question for Sejin? <coughs> uh, accepting? This is not those uh, theoretical question, but in the last slide, you said about the biosimilar drugs or copy drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, those kind of, how, how much cost does those kind of drugs approximately save from the manufacturing process? Uh, actually, I have no idea how much we can save in the real money, but anyway, to develop the new drugs, um, at least billion dollars or ten million dollars should be spent for the only one drug, and only five percent to ten percent get success in developing drugs. But in biosimilar industry, they don't take those kind of high risk. They don't take a uh, kind of, uh, I mean, compl complex process to establish the manufacturing system because they already have design. This is why we can save the money in biosimilar area, but I don't know how much exactly we can save. This is only Lee jae have that information, I think. Okay, for uh, the drugs, if it's a copy drug, if it's a small molecule, then that drug, copy drug, is called as a generic drug. I just uh, typed that spelling in uh, the chat window. And if it's a biological, it's so-called a biosimilar drug. Okay. If it's a chemical structure, molecular structure <laughs> and also molecular uh, the purity, that is relatively straightforward. It's difficult to make a fake drug. So generic drug is almost the same drug as the original, you can assume, other than that formulations. The formulation means whether you make it into the syrup or you make it in the crystal solid or maybe uh, the glass solid. Depending on those, uh, the formulation, the drug's absorption can be affected, genetically affected, but ingredient is the same. By the way, biosimilar, if it's a biological drugs, let's say antibody or hormones or proteins, even though you follow exactly the same procedure, you assume still the end result, the end products, the quality or the purity is difficult to control. <coughs> That's why genetic is considered as almost the same effect of original drug. Biosimilar, you need to check carefully whether it's uh, pure enough or safe enough, even though in principle it should be the same drugs. Now, price-wise, biosimilar is uh, cheaper than original drug? Yes, because original drug, you should go through all those research process of discovery, optimization, and preclinical pre trial and clinical trial. All those expenses are included in the price of original drug. Now, biosimilar drug or the generic drug, you don't need to pay money for those research and you know, also clinical mm -hmm. trial. That's why you, know, you can just um, put synthesis cost or maybe biosimilar production cost. 
that's why it becomes maybe 1% or 0.1% of the price. So generic drug is good business in a sense. Once the original drug's patent is over, then many people, they try to make this generic drug. It's open for people. Very similar, as I said, make exactly the same qual the quality of a drug is difficult. So that's why biosimilar is, has a more requirement to prove that that's really safe. So that means biosimilar drugs, still they needed to do small scale of a clinical trial to check those efficacy and also safety. Okay, other question? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so, um, when you talked about the, the several mechanisms of Herceptin, I found that over here in the E slide, um, it e seems slide? that, yes, yes, in the figure E, it says mm -hmm. that um, an activation of anti antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity is being introduced. Um, and I don't exactly um, see how it, the mechanism works because um, when I learned about immunology, I heard about how the cytotoxic T cell activates by, um, by, by attaching to this MHC1 class, class one protein, and then act activating the TC cells. But it seems that it directly attaches to the antibody, so I don't know what's the difference. So yeah, actually, uh, I think the ADCC make um, higher chance to contact this kind of immune infected cells and infected cells. I mean, in the natural condition, immune infected cell and tumor cell just float away. But if you have the antibody and through this FG region, this antibody can bring this immune infected cells specifically to the cancer cells, which makes higher chance to contact NK cell to tumor cells. And later then, the mechanism you already know, they put some cytokine and some cytotoxicity and kill the tumor cells. Oh, so is this kind of an innate immunity or yeah. adaptive immunity? Uh -huh. Kind of immunity. Uh, okay. Okay. Now here, this this is a little different kind of questions. Now, in principle, in the immunology, if one, do you see my cursor? Yeah. Okay. So if one cell is, if many antibodies bind to one cell, okay, this is the immune cell. This can be T cell or different type of macrophage or different kind of immune cells. They can recognize if one cell is bound to many antibodies, then they recognize that as kind of something wrong in there. Then they have a better activated than to attack these cells. So this is kind of antibody induced immune response. So if antibody can bind to whatever the foreign bodies, then cleaner cells like a macrophage or the T cells, they can come near and then can activate. So this is like active utilizing of our immune system. So this is something related to next week topic of immune checkpoint or other immunotherapy. Okay. Now uh, before we move uh, the, we finish, I want to focus on here. If you look at here, oops, where is it? Now this is the, the, the remote control. Okay, here. If you look at this structure, now you can see here, antigen binding, this kind of a binding or binding motif you can get from T cells generated by maybe mouse or other animals. And this part is a humanized one. Last week, we, uh, the last class we said, if the antibody is an uh, animal antibody, then it can induce, it can induce 
the immune, immune response, response in yeah. human body, right? So that's why to minimize those immune response, they change this part. This part is a human antibody structure and only binding to this part of the structure on top of here. Then this kind of a, uh, the chimeric antibody or ionized antibody is more and more proper antibody drug for multiple uses. Okay. Okay, let's just stop here and let's move to next class. Session, will you take down this? Okay, next of the speaker is a tone. <laughs> Okay, so I'll okay, start my presentation. Okay, so um, my presentation will be a lot similar to what we have heard just before. So it will be covering many the same things, and it will be a lot easier because I didn't. Um, uh, to have a chance to research in more detail about this topic. Anyway, so today my topic is about Herbitux or other, the trade name is Herbitux and the actual name of the monoclonal antibody is the Tuximab. So this is also a monoclonal antibody and it is a chimeric antibody which means that it was derived from mouse in both humans. And it targets and inhibit, inhibits EGFR, which we have talked before, an epidermal growth factor receptor, or also HER, HER1, HER2, HER3, or HER4, and which is overexpressed in almost 34% uh, of all tumors. So it is used for the treatment of metastatic collectoral cancer, and also for lung cancer and head and neck. So it targets the diver diversity of many cancers. So this EGFR, I'm going to talk about in the later slides. Um, but uh, the, the general de description of it is, it is a transmembrane protein uh, in the epidermal graft growth factor family. So um, this drug, Arbitux, has been approved by FDA in 2009. And it is distributed in different companies, either in the US or outside of the US. So in the US and Canada, it is distributed by company L. Lilly. And outside of the US and Canada, um, it is distributed by Merck. And when I searched about it, only Japan has a different distributing company, but I don't think it's really important. So, um, the mechanism of action of the, of the Sictuximab or Arbitux is by inhibiting the HER, HER. So, this HER, also known as EGFR, are cell membrane bound glycoproteins. And these glycoproteins are divided into three regions an extracellular one and an intracellular one with tyrosine kinase activity and a transmembrane, which is bounded inside the cell membrane. So if we look at the picture A and B, we can see that in, tu in tumor environment, the EJFR is overexpressed. So this is a easy diagram. And this is cetuximab or, uh, okay, so first when a tumor is the tumor is growing, a specific ligand attaches to the EGFR or HER1. We are going to only focus on the HER1 receptor because the Herbitux only affects on HER1. So when it attached to the HER1 receptor, it gets dimerized. So it could be either homodimerized or heterodimerized, depending on what it attaches to. And this activates a bit a cascade of cell by biochemistry, which we have all talked before, the TPI, uh, the um, PI3, or other cell cascading fact, cascading complexes, and this eventually makes transcription available. So it could secrete VG, VEGF 
and other things that could accelerate tumor growth and eventually inducing angiogenesis or apoptosis of, apoptosis of the cell. So this cetuximab attaches competitive, competitively competes with the ligand in binding with the HER1 and eventually blocking the dimerization of the tyrosine kinase and eventually blocking the transduction pathway. So this leads to the anti various anti-tumor effects such as the indux induction of apoptosis and very, very other things that could eventually um, kill the path of generation of the collateral cancer or any other cancer. So um, this drug is administered intravenously with an H1 antagonist, which means um, the H1 antagonist is a kind of a drug that also mediates the destruction of tumor cells by inhibiting some kinds of histone proteins. And the side effects of the cytoxamab is that it could cause infusion reactions, um, which are kind of highly, having a high chance of being deadly. And also it could cause very skin reactions on 80% of patients. So you'll have a high chance of having an ache or itch, itching when you have this drug. And also, as Sejin have talked about in the previous lecture, it has very high, high costs because many big pharma companies have been using many researchers to develop this drug and eventually gets higher. So um, this is approximately, it causes, costs $30,000 within eight weeks of treatment and it gets more expensive when combined with their radiation therapy. So this needs to be fixed. So many bio biosimilar drugs have been and go are going to be developed as well as Herceptin. So um, this is quite, this is the end of my presentation. And thank you. Okay, thank you, Dong. The question to Dong's presentation. Yeah, I have. What? Actually, Perceptin shows a high efficacy in breast cancer and stomach cancer. And Stuximab has shown high efficacy in not small lung cancer. But they are targeting similar EGFR. So I'm really curious what makes this difference, even though they target the same thing. Um. Maybe I think is this it's just because that the HER1 is overexpressed in only in the targeted collector and lung and head and head and neck. In these parts, I think that HER1 is overexpressed. And I think that in stomach and in the breast, I think HER2 is overexpressed. So I I guess that the locations were where the different overexpressed receptors are being located, that, that makes the difference. So maybe other reasons are behind that, but I think that's an easy answer for that, so. Okay, that's very good guess. Could you move to the page eight? Page five, sorry. So as you can see in this picture, you know, depending on those, in this case, only one per one was expressed here. And upper, upper one is a lower number and lower one is a higher number. So in the cell or in the body, depending on different cell types, the whole one, two, three, four's relative amount may be different. And maybe activity is also different. So depending on those expression level and then also activity, which one should be main reason to make the cancer the faster growing? I think that can be the possible reason why the different uh, the HER isotypes has been used for the target. Even if it's the same target, still depending on those binding site, epitope uh, the site, maybe it may have a different interference with the partnering with the different partners. So here the assumption is the HER is binding to only different type of HER, but 
It's also possible that there is a different regulating the partners may bind. Some of them is a positive one, some of them is a negative one. Then if possible, you want to get selective inhibition only, only for the negative ones. So it's quite complicated situations. This is a super simplified view. That's why it's difficult. That's why once you make those drugs, you may scream against the different cancers and figure out which cancer responds best. Then you choose the best one first. Okay, other question? Uh, in the last slide, uh, the presenter mentioned about the radiation therapy. Does this therapy related to the, those dro uh, drugs uh, mechanism so it makes synergy with drugs or just uh, suggests with the conventional therapy? Um. So I don't quite understand the question. So does that mean that the radiation therapy is used because it has shown effectiveness or it is it's just used because it's a conventional therapy? Is that your question? Yeah. Um, well, I guess that the radiation therapy is used because it has shown effectiveness. Otherwise, the companies have used other conventional chemo chemotherapy and other things combined to give better results. So I, I just think that the company has developed this multiple treatment. So I, I don't exactly. Yeah, even though we are, we are handling second generation of uh, the drug and next week, third generation, that does not mean that third or second one is uh, much better than first one and it can cure everything. So if second or third one, third generation is not good enough, then always look for some combination therapy with the conventional ones. Maybe depending on those location, radio, radiation therapy is easier for some type of cancer, and maybe chemotherapy is easier for different target, different target, or maybe surgery is the same situation. So, Whenever possible, if there is an easy access to the cancer site, then and second generation is not 100% effective, then always try to find some uh, cocktail therapy or combined, combined therapy. Good question. Okay, if not, let's move on to the, the third presenter. Not presentator, presenter. Speaker, presenter. Okay. So next presenter is the texture. Okay. Hey, let's go. Oh, oh wait. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, I will ready. start. Oh, I will introduce about this bevacizumab, and this drug is sold under the brand name Avastin. And I think uh, this drug is already introduced in Bioscience, yeah. I, I remember uh, introduced it. Uh, it is a monoclonal antibodies and angiogenesis inhibitor. Uh, this drug is approved for uh, medical use in the USA in 2004. And also, uh, it is on the WHO, World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. Uh, and at the first presentation, uh, the there is a avastin in the Sejin's presentation. The graph of the post that means this drug is very uh, uh this drug is very essential medicines. Uh, uh before I introduce about mechanism, there is some proteins that I will talk about. The first one is hypoxia inducible factor. Uh, this protein 
do their work when the cell is under the hypoxic condition. The second one is pre-EGF. This is a vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, is a pro-angiogenesis uh, protein. And the pre-EGF R2 and neuropelin is a receptor of pre-EGF. Also, bevacizumab is an angiogenesis inhibitor, so we should know about the angiogenesis. Uh, cancer cells have high metabolic rates, we have already known. Uh, and as a result, the cancer cells, is, cancer cells are characterized by the presence of hypoxia. <coughs> so the cancer cells are under the hypoxic condition, then HIF, hypoxia-inducible factor, binds to VGF gene, thus produce VGF protein, and cancer cells release the VGF protein out of, out of the cancer cell, and VGF binds to the VGF, binds to the VGF R2 and neuropelin 1. Uh, the VGF R2 and neuropelin 1 is located on the surface of the endothelial cells, so VGF is come out from the cancer cells and bind to the endothelial cells, then uh, the angiogenesis is taught. That means when VGF binds to the receptor, uh, the signal transduction is happened and endothelial cells uh, proliferation and migration can happen. Uh, this is the mechanism of bevacizumab. Uh, the bevacizumab is selectively binds to VGF, as you can see this picture. Uh, so bevacizumab inhibits the binding of VGF to their receptors, and this leads to the reduction in tumor blood vessels and limits the blood supply to tumor tissues. So this drug uh, binds to VGF instead of VGF uh, receptor. So it can stop the blood supply for cancer cells. Uh, this drug is uh, injected through vein, uh, Hyalguan Jusa. So, uh, and it has some adverse effects. And the most adverse, uh, many of the adverse effects is related to circulatory system. Uh, there is a research that bevacizumab is interfere the platelets work. So it has a result of high blood pressure and a risk of bleeding and gastrointestinal perforation. A gastrointestinal perforation is tongong. So there is a hole in the intestine. And also when we used this bevacizumab map a long time and used a lot, there can be thromboembolic events. This is a hyalsecton, secton, like that. And these adverse effects also caused by platelets uh, problem. So bevacizumab is in, uh, neutralize the platelet function. So many of the adverse effects is related to circulatory system. Uh, thank you for listening. Okay, uh, thank you, Tekjun. There are now questions to Tekjun. Um, I have a question. So, how does the Avastin affects the deterioration of the platelets? Uh, actually, uh, platelet, platelets also have VEGF because when the when we hurt, then platelets uh, should uh, make a new blood vessels sometimes. So platelets also have their own VGF, but there's a research that platelets 
take off the bevacizumab. Map. So bevacizumab map work work in that platelet region. So it means bevacizumab map neutralize the uh, platelet function. So it has it uh, it leads to the risk risk of bleeding like that. I understand uh, like that. So map can uh, affect affect to platelets like that. Okay, this drug is affecting the the growth of uh, the blood vessels. If you block the blood vessel synthesis, then it's a very good chance there may be some bleeding because blood vessel becomes weak, and also there may be some uh, the hole can be formed. So you want to block only the new blood vessel synthesis, that's the angiogenesis blocker. But you know, other part of uh, repairing of uh, other blood vessels also can be affected. So this is the result of uh, the side effect of this drug. Can you go to one slide back? Okay, here. Now, interesting thing you can see here. Now, this is the VGF. This is cross pack. Oops, you don't see my... Mm. Action, would you allow me to control? It's okay. okay. So now if you see here, this is a receptor, right? This is a growth factor. Vascular endothelial growth factor. Vascular endothelial means blood vessels, the underlining of the cells. Those are the cells forming up those blood vessels. Now their growth factor. This is growth factor and this, that, this is growth factor receptor. Okay. If you look at those antibodies target, previous the Herceptin and also the HER1 antibodies, they bind to the receptor and they interfere of those receptors with dimerase agent. Right? But in this case, this antibody is binding directly to this cross factor, to the ligand. Then, do you think it's also possible this antibody may be different antibody which can bind to this site? Can it be therapeutic antibody too? What do you think? Possible or not possible? Oh, professor, oh, I cannot see your cursor. Do you see this? Oh, no. Oh, you don't see my cursor? Yes, how, how can I see it? Oh, you don't see that? Nobody right. can see your cursor. Me either. Oh, you don't see that? Now I see. Now, now I can see the two, two of them. This is me. Who is this? Oh, this is me, but I can't see your cursor. Uh, others. Do you do you see my cursor? This one. No. You don't Nothing see. Is I'm Nothing. seeing. Is not perfect. Sorry. You can um, use the annotate thing to make an uh, artificial mouse. Annotate. Sometimes, if I get this uh, the remote control, then usually you can see that. Textual allow again. Okay. Now let me try. Now can you see? Oh yes, I I can see. Now, now you can see. Yeah. Textual, do you see that too? Yes. Yes. Okay. I may need to click one time. Okay, here, this is ligand. This is a receptor, right? Now this antibody is binding to the ligand and then interfere of those ligand binding to the receptor. My question was, if there's another antibody which binds to this receptor here, can it be effective drug too? Yes or no? Maybe yes. Maybe yes? Yeah, it should be yes. So now you have two options. If you develop antibody, then you can develop antibody against gross factor, or you can develop the antibody against this receptor. Now, if your target is a very small molecule, let's just say the your signaling molecule is a very small molecule, like a GTP, okay? Then if you want to make anti-GTP, now the problem is, if you inject the GTP into animal's body, 
it's too small. Usually too small molecule, they do not raise immune response. You need to add some big chunk, like serum albumin, big protein, and then attach that molecule on the surface. Then it can induce immune response. By the way, if you inject this huge receptor into animal body, now it's also a problem. This part is a hydrophobic, this is a hydrophilic, and maybe the antibody can be generated against the here, this epitope, here, 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 here. Then it can be too complicated. In the case of your choice is you can cut small part over here, reasonable size, and then inject this into animal body. Then generate the antibody. You need to design how big of the antigen you are going to generate. Okay. Now, if you inject this kind of active molecule, growth factor, whole growth factor, if you inject this into animal body, it may act as signaling the molecule rather than antigen. That's also a possibility. There is a, some crosstalk between different species. If this is an activating molecule in mouse, sorry, in human, then if you inject this the same molecule into the mouse, they may have a very high homology, similar structure. They may act as growth factor rather than antigen. That's also a possibility. So in the case, you may need to cut some of them and then make it not active, but only act as antigen. Okay. So you need to have some of the strategy how to design this kind of molecules. Now, if you make this antibody against this receptor, that's okay. Uh, this ligand, that's okay. But if you make this antibody against either this part, extracellular part, or membrane bound part, or intracellular part, okay? Let's just say intracellular part, if you make that antibody against here, that antibody can be good drug or not? No. If you say no, then why not? Because that antibody may have difficulty to get into the cell membrane. That's uh, a very good point. And to cell your cell, yeah. Whatever the cell, antibody size is a 150 kilodalton. Shiboman, it's a huge. This size of a protein cannot penetrate this membrane, the intact membrane. That's why if your target of this antibody is binding is inside the cell, that antibody drug will not work. Okay, so that's important uh, the aspect you should consider. Antibody drugs target should be on the cell surface and outside of the cell surface, not inside here. Okay, so we didn't study carefully about the Lipinski rule. What kind of molecule can act as a drug-like molecule? Well, we managed a little reasonable hydrophobicity is important. We mentioned one time. And molecular weight is also another the criteria. Usually drug-like molecule should be molecular weight of less than 500, 500. Antibody size is 150,000. It's a huge molecules. Glucose is about 180. A little bigger than glucose, but it should not be too big. If it's too big, then it has a difficulties to penetrate this cell membrane. Okay. Now, uh, other questions for section? No question? Okay, then let me ask you this question. If you develop small molecule drug, which can bind to this receptor, and then if you have an antibody which bind to this receptor, which one may be better? Receptor and what? If you have a drug molecule, small molecule drugs, which bind to this part, 
And also, you, if you have antibody, not to the ligand, bind to here, same site. The which drug may be better. Professor, I can, cannot see your cursor again. Oh, can you see? Oops. Yes, I can. No. Yes. Okay. If you have a small molecule, that small molecule bind to this site, receptor binding site. Okay. Then you have also antibody which bind to the same site. Now, if you compare that small molecule drug and antibody drug, which drug may be better? Antibody. Why? Um, because because well, it is it more can. expensive. Because it can also bring immune responses. Okay, that's an interesting point. We mentioned uh, the you know twenty minutes ago. If antibody bind here, it blocks the signal. That's one effect. And if many antibodies bound to the cell surface, then maybe another immune response we can expect too. Yeah, two effects we can uh, we can expect. So maybe better. But if that Antibody drug is a hundred times more expensive than small molecule. What do you say? And that antibody is a humanized, like a chimeric antibody, but human part is 80%, mouse part is 20%. Those are 20% of those structure generate some immune response. Then what do you do? Buy the cheaper one. You change the answer. Make for it's, human antibody. Yeah. What? I just I just said it's, it's better to make fully human antibody. Um. Yeah. If you can make the fully humanized antibody, maybe the side effect. The problem is uh, becoming lower, possibly. But still, the paratop site you cannot fully replace, right? At least you should save the paratop uh, the shape. That's somehow you can improve, but um, how, about the, how about the cost issues? But this is not the, the easy question. So as uh, the surgeon showed in the beginning, the, in the drug market, the top 10 drugs recently, recent to two, three years. Before that, always the top 10 drugs, majority of them were small molecule drugs. But recent to two, three years, more than half of those are top 10 drugs. They are biologicals, either growth factors or antibodies. There should be good reason for that, right? As you mentioned, still the drug, the antibody drugs are the very expensive. So that means, and, and also antibody drug has a limitations. They can be used as only for cell surface, not for the intracellular, the structure. Mouse is moving too fast. Still, there is some advantage why you should use the antibody drug rather than small molecule. So that is something we want, we want to discuss later, okay? Anyway, today you guys have heard three examples of antibody drugs. For all the cases, those antibodies, they bind to a specific molecular target, either receptor or ligand. Maybe it can be antibody or maybe some growth factors like a TNF, Tumor necrosis factor kind of thing, different active molecule to neutralize it. If you think about the original function of antibody in our body, it's a defense molecule. If any toxic molecule invade our body, they bind to them and neutralize it. Neutralize means detoxificate it. 
Then once the antibody binds to something, macrophage swallow it. Okay. So there is some uh, the good com the, some reason how you can compare those with uh, small molecule drugs. Anyway, this is kind of some examples of the second generation of uh, cancer drugs targeted cancer therapy. So next week, action would you take down your file? So next week, we are going to move to the third generation of our drugs. After this, so that's immuno checkpoint drugs. Okay. That's kind of a most recent the one. And also many of those uh, the pages were uh, the, the allocated for this from the book, Biosciences EA. And uh, case is as usual, that's to uh, Tuesday. Next week, there is a serious uh, the assignment so check up those assignment. I uh, the ask you to, oops. I ask you about um, the some drugs of uh, immune checkpoint, uh, the drug example. But at least I wanted to hear one of you uh, to choose um, the phage display kind of a molecular evolution technique. That is also a very important topic. We want to cover together. Okay. So you can choose uh, the, those. Uh, the topics and then make uh, the assignment uh, the PPT file by Wednesday next week. Okay, any question for today's lecture? If not, have a good weekend and study hard and see you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.